Ready? Fantastic. Great. We got, hey? we got good reception tonight. That's great. That's good. Yeah. Now, um, you, what do you want to do? Do you want to do an introduction or do you want me to do it? Yeah, go for it, mate. I'm all ready. Um, okay, welcome everybody to um, Off the Cuff. Off the Cuff is um, dealing with subjects for mature believers. Believers that... Um, want to go further up the path. They don't want to dilly-dally with the, all the first steps. That want to go past and come into reality. And tonight we're going to... So if anybody is offended by anything that's here, we're dreadfully sorry, but I think the body needs... We're going to talk about the body tonight, and the body needs to... Um, as it says in the scripture, to grow up into the head. And if we're fighting and squabbling among ourselves, well, then it says that we're not mature. So we need to get things together and be able to speak together as messianics and natsurim and come to terms with the reality because the body is in the world. It is true. It is happening now. The real body in the last days is being formed. So we want to talk about that body. So before we go any, anywhere, you need a backup of Scripture. You need to know what the Scripture is saying to us. So tonight we're going to look at what the Scripture says so that we have a foundation for communication. We're all going to know what way we should communicate. So before we take make any more talk, let's get into the scripture. So if we turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, there's going to be a bit of scripture, probably about four or five chapters of reading. So I hope that you can keep your concentration together. If you can't, well, you know, it's immature. You should be able to. So we're not going to dilly-dally. Off the cuff is off the cuff. We're real about this. You know, it's time to wake up and see what the head is saying to the body. Okay, fantastic. Right there. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 11, verse 3. And I wish you to know that the head of every man is the Messiah. That's Yahushua. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Messiah is Elohim. Well, that puts everything straight, you know. Yep. Talking about a body. And here we're talking about the head part of the body. Right? Next scripture is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're going to read right through that chapter. Wow. Okay, stay with me. You right there, Mark? Yeah, I'm good, mate. <laughs> and concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not wish you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles led away to the dumb idols, even as you might be led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the spirit of Elohim says Yahushua is a curse, and no one is able to say that Yahushua is master except by the set-apart spirit. So, of course, we need the set-apart spirit in us, and uh, you know how to get that. <clears throat> and, there is, and there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. Now, these gifts come into the body by the spirit. There's nowhere in the scripture that says that it is in a C-H-U-R-C-H. You got that point? This is not speaking of in a C-H-U-R-C-H, which means circus, the real word. This, this is not speaking of that. This is speaking of what goes on in the body. It's an assembly. Okay, so there's a big difference there. There's nowhere in the scripture that tells us that we should have those sort of gatherings or meetings. 
or have a building like that or be have an establishment where men lord it over other men. It's not true. How's that, Mark? Oh, wonderful. So there are different kinds of services, but the same master. Services doesn't mean meetings in a CH, in a circus. And there are different kinds of workings, but it is the same Elohim who is working all in all. And to each one is given the manifestation of the spirit for profiting. So everyone gets a bit. For one is given a word of wisdom, through the Spirit. Now, this is just wherever you are, wherever you hope, happen to be, you can give someone a word of, word of wisdom through the Spirit. It's not in a formal gathering, you know, where you have music and worship and all that carry on. It's not it. It's just in life. Wherever you might be, you can give a word of wisdom to someone in life, not in a controlled environment. The environment has to be controlled by Yahusha coming through us through the Spirit. These things need to be talked about and people need to know about it and come out of that mindset and move on. <clears throat> so one is given a word of wisdom through the Spirit and to another a word of knowledge according to the same Spirit and to another belief by the same spirit and to another gifts of healing by the same spirit and to another operations of powers and to another prophecy and to another discerning of spirits and to another kinds of tongues which means languages and to another interpretation of those languages. So this is the scripture. This is in life. This is where the body is. The body is all over the world. It's happening through the body, not in a circus. This is the reality that we all need to see. This is happening in life, not in a controlled environment. But one of the same spirit works all these, distributing to each one individually as he intends. Not as we intend, but as he intends. So it's got to be a real experience. It's got to be a growth. You have to have a growth to come into this experience where you actually know inside yourself that the spirit that of Yahushua, the set-apart spirit, is talking to you and wanting you to say something. That's how it works. Not in the circus mindset. That's not the way. Right. But one and the same spirit works all these distributing to each other individually as he intends. That's the point. He intends. So we have to surrender to his will, not ours. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is the Messiah. So you have to come into the body of Messiah. You have to be immersed into the right name, into his name, to become part of true Israel. The circus is not Israel. The circus is a circus. That's exactly what it is. It's not led by the Spirit. It's led by men. These things have to be told to the world so that truth is out there. And we're going for it. This is off the cuff. If you can't handle it, well, okay, so be it. But you need to grow up and realise what the actual word is saying to us. He's talking about his body, how he wants it to perform. We need to know all this. For indeed, by one spirit, we were all immersed into one body whether Yehudim or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all made to drink into one spirit. Okay, what does that tell you? You know, it's one body. The body has to have a mindset, which is not the mindset of men, which is not the mindset of Christianity, which is not the mindset of the Messianics, which is pretty messed up at the moment. It's not that mindset, it's his mindset. 
Men don't need to go around for forming organisations and building buildings. That is not where it's at. You know? Mm. We have to look at this. This is wonderful te teaching from, from the Word. For indeed the body is not one member but many. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, does it therefore not belong to the body? And if the ear says, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, does it therefore not belong to the body? If all the body was an eye, where would the hearing, where would be the hearing? If all hearing, where would be the smelling? But now Elohim has sent, set the members, each one of them in the body, even as he pleased. He has set them. He pleases to do it his way. And only those that are in touch and that are willing to surrender and enter in his way will be part of the body. If you're making up your own rules and mind, so forth, you're not really part of the body. You might be saying that you are and blah de blah de blah but you're not. This is a real experience that we all need to come into. It's not, you know, hissy-pissy, it's a real thing. And if they all had been one member, where would the body be? It wouldn't, would it? And that's what's going on. You know, everyone wants to be like that. And now there are indeed many members but one body, and an eye is unable to say to the hand, I have no need of you. You can't say that to your brother or sister. Or again, the head to the feet. I have no need of you. It's not, it's not on. That's, he doesn't want that in his body. We are in his body. This is his body if you've been immersed in the name of Yahushua the Messiah. It's his body. And you have to get into obedience according to his word and come into his mindset. You have to surrender your life to him. He leads you. It's a real relationship and you can't fake it. It's too late to fake it. It's life or death. But much rather those members of the body which are thought to be weaker are necessary. The weaker ones are necessary. And those of the body which we think of to be less respected these we present greater respect. Are you doing that to your fellow believer? Can you see if someone's weaker and has less than you? Are you doing that? Are you living and behaving that? If you're not, you're out of line. You missed the point. And our unseemly members have greater seemliness. See? Whereas our seemly members, those that have got it together, have no need. We don't have any need. We want to give out. We want to help. We want to love. We want people to come into his reign and know that they're forgiven, everything's washed away. They're okay. They're acceptable. And if we're not doing that, we're not loving this way, we're not living it right. We're deluded. Right, but Elohim blended together the body, having given greater respect to that member which lacks it. So that's the way to go, brothers and sisters, that there should be no division in the body, but that the members should have the same concern for one another. Are you doing that? Is that how you're living? Is that how you're working? This is the belief. This is what he wants. No division. No division in his body. There should be no division. If you have division, you're wrong. If you're putting out things that aren't right to other people, you're wrong. You've lost the point. Okay? I'm saying it. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. You get in there and you help them. Or if one member is esteemed, all the members rejoice with it. Hey, we just did our 20th baptism since we've been up in far north Queensland. Let you all celebrate in it. 
You know, the angels in heaven are, why aren't you? And you are a body of Messiah and members individually. And Elohim has appointed these in the assembly. Firstly, emissaries. Secondly, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles. Then gifts of healings, helps, ministrations, kinds of tongues. Are all emissaries? Are all prophets? No, no. Are all teachers? No. Are all workers of miracles? No. Do all speak with tongues? No. Do all interpret? No. But earnestly seek the better gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. So, you know the next chapter, the better gift is love. All those things have a place for a while while you're going through it. <clears throat> a lot of people want these for power for themselves. The greatest is love. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying to us. That's the greatest gift. Okay, so we're in a body. Yahushua Messiah is the head. He wants us to come into his mindset and live Torah the way he says it. Even a child can understand this. If you're having prob problems reasoning with yourself about the things I've said, you're immature. If you're angry about this, you're immature. You need to grow and pass the test and come into what he's got for you because what he's got for you is so wonderful. And that's why every, everybody's coming to this place. They're coming to this place. He's pressuring us to move. He wants his body to awaken on earth because he's got things for the body to do. He wants us awake and aware and flowing with each other. No division. <clears throat> How much division is amongst the Messianics that have come out of the world, come out of religions, and they've come into being a Messianic? How many of them are fighting? Have a look, brothers and sisters. This is off the cuff. This is real. He doesn't want any division. <clears throat> We are not allowed to have division. We are not allowed to think and do and say what we want. We've got to think Torah. We've got to have the mindset of Torah. We have to be surrendered to our emotions and feelings, fill ourselves with Torah. This is what he wants from us. He's telling us. He's telling the body through this. He's telling us we are a body. He wants the body to function his way. We've got to go there. Right, the next scripture is Ephesians 1, 19 to 23. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who are believing according to the workings of his mighty strength, which he wrought in the Messiah when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenlies? far above all rule and authority and power and mastery and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all under his feet and gave him to be, what? Head over all to the assembly, not to the circus. You'll see that there's no such thing mentioned in here as the circus and the way that what men run those organisations, which is his body. He's the head over, the assembly is his body, the completeness of him who fills all in all. He's doing a job in us. If you've got things coming against you, don't think it's Satan because it's Yahushua telling you, you need to move on, you need to grow up, you need to come into obedience to what his will is. Remember, the flesh is insatiable. That means it just cannot stop wanting. That's why we need to die to the flesh and not get caught up in what the world's doing, but come into this mindset, have these priorities, this sort of behaviour. We need to be loving our brothers and sisters. We're not we're not doing it. We're not growing to the place where he wants us to grow. How are you feeling, Mark? 
You're oh, wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> okay, the next next one is Ephesians chapter four and five. <clears throat> now remember, we're wanting a foundation. We're wanting a foundation to stand on so that we can all be in unity. We need to be in this unity together. We need all to be in contact to understand his mindset on behaviour. It's all about behaviour and love. He wants loving behaviour. Okay, so this is part of the foundation. Just flow with it. Just let the word speak to you because it's Yahusha speaking to you. I don't want to say anything to you much. I just, of myself, I just want this to come through. I think it's vitally important for this day. Chapter 4. I call upon you, therefore, I, the prisoner of the Master, to walk worthily of the calling in which you were called. He wants us to walk worthily. Worthily, with all humility and meekness, with patience, bearing one another in love, being eager to guard the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Are you guarding the unity or couldn't you care less? You just want to have your say when you get on the computer. You just want to tell someone off. You just want to have your say, catch them out of their words and say, oh, you made a mistake there, brother. You know, pharisaical mindset that goes nowhere. Why don't you just, you know, the person that puts themselves off is going to get life and let somebody else have it. Are you being like this, what this scripture said? Do you feel that way towards your brother and sister? We need to put ourselves off and concern for them, not for ourselves and our feelings and our esteem. That's just sowing death. Again, the body, one body and one spirit, as you also were called in one expectation of your calling. It's all the same. Everyone's the same. One master, one belief, one immersion. Yod hey, ua hey. Ooh, you. That's it. Yahuwah or Yahusha. It's a you, not a W, it's a you. So that's what you need to be immersed in. I'll just turn that fan off. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm not too over the top. Oh, wonderful. Oh, good. Body needs this, mate. <laughs> yeah. So one master, one belief, one immersion, one hour of him, and father of all, one father, who is above all, is above all of us, and through all and in you all. Right. But to each one of us, favour was given according to the mess, measure of the gift of Messiah. We're all given favour. Not grace. It's not grace. That is why it says when he went up on high, he led captivity captive. It's captured and we're free and gave gifts to men. But what, what does he went up mean except that he also first went down into the lower parts of the earth, yeah? Mm. <clears throat> right into the womb. He went he who went down is also the one who went up far above all the heavens to fill all. So we know it can only be Yahuwah. He came in the flesh of Yahusha, okay? And his spirit, set apart spirit, he sends into us. And he himself gave some as emissaries and some as prophets and some as evangelists and some as shepherds and some as teachers for the perfecting of the set apart ones to the work of service, to the building up of the body of Messiah. The body has to be built up. The body has to understand the process. These ministries get, come, come when there's a group and 
they're, they're there to help and to lead. And some people are these things uh, on the internet. You know, these gifts are coming through men on the internet. But you've got to make sure they're the right men. So he wants us all to come to the unity of the belief and the knowledge of the son of Elohim to a perfect man to the measure of the statue of the completeness of Messiah. That's where he's bringing us. If we pass this test, if we see, if we open up, let him have us, so that we should no longer be what children tossed and borne about by every wind of teaching, by the trickery of men in cleverness unto the craftiness of leading astray. That's what's going on in the messianic scene. I just want to say when uh, we're in Australia here, and you've all probably heard of Hillsong. When Hillsong came to Sydney, they deceived everybody and told them that they had to be under an umbrella, under a protection, a, a, a banner. They had to be in that place. Otherwise, they were wrong. They were out. They were out of order. So all the independent churches were broken down and people were scattered and they all went into Hillsong. And that's why they're multi-million dollar churches. It's built, the foundation is built on a lie. And they're just wanting to control people and make money. And I mean, have you ever heard Brian Houston preach? I mean, it's so pathetic, you know, it's crazy, it's insane. It's not the truth and the reality that we all need. We need this sort of truth. Cleverness and craftiness, and they make you feel like you're nothing. Okay, I'm, they're there. I don't judge them, but I'm out of it. I can see what it is. I saw how they just went right across Australia and then into the world. You know? Who am I? No one. But I can see this reality. It's not the foundation that we're seeing now. It really isn't. But maintaining the truth in love, we grow up in all respects into him who is the head, Messiah. We've got to maintain the love to grow up. We all need to grow up into the head who is Messiah. He will show you the way. From who the entire body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the working by which each part does its share. We've got to do our share. Causes growth of the body for the building up of itself in. In what, Mark? I've lost my spot. What verse are you in? <laughs> in love. Verse 16. <laughs> 16. Chapter 4, verse 16. Love. You're thinking, you're thinking too much as we go. <laughs> I know. It's fantastic. You're getting caught up in all this. I know. It's wonderful. Is it? That's good. Yeah. So this I say and witness in the Master that you should no longer walk as the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind. That's how so many Messianics are walking. Having been darkened in their understanding having been estranged from the life of Elohim because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart. Uh, I was wonderful when I found out the heart has to be circumcised. That's the only way you can come into this. You have to be circumcised in the heart and get a soft heart. <clears throat> Who having become callous, have given themselves up to indecency, to work all uncleanness with greediness. And that's the people that are persecuting Lou White, lovely Lou White and his wonderful wife, Phyllis. This is what they are. <clears throat> and they need, if they really want to be right with Yahusha, because you wait till you find out what happens as we go on to those that are disobedient. You know, Lou is right. He's got it right. And we all need to realise and respect the man and love the man and back him up and encourage him, which we're not doing. You know, people latch onto all this wicked gossip 
It's not the mindset Torah wants us to have. It's not the mindset of the master. You can see what it is, uncleanness with greediness. Lou White wrote fossilised customs. He did it, right? Yep. And the same as um, the scripture. Chris Costa did that, didn't he? Yep. Okay? Okay, you got it? They, they both wrote those books, right? So we need to feed off them. We need to understand them. You know, give credit where credit's due. You can't steal it. <laughs> Just look at Lou, Lou's biography. You'll see Lou and Phyllis, how they really are. How anyone can persecute them is just stupidity. Okay, I'm not judging anyone. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying how it is. Yeah. There's a, wonderful, there's a wonderful scripture we're going to come into soon, and it says, be wroth, but don't sin. You can be angry if you want. <laughs> yeah. but don't sin. I'm angry as hell at those people. Yeah. I wish they'd wake up. I'm not sinning. I'm not judging them. I'm just telling the T R U T H. Hey, baby. Now, uh, but you have not so learned Messiah. That's verse twenty. That you haven't learned that way. That's that's not his way. In Messiah. If indeed you have heard him and were taught by him, as truth is in Yahusha, that you put off with regard to your former way of life, the old life, the old man being corrupted according to the desires of the deceit, and to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. It can only be renewed by his spirit, by immersion, by his word, his word is alive. But if you don't have the name, his name, Yahuwah, to open up the scripture to you and get the knowledge and the wisdom that's in there, you will never receive it. You may think you have it. You may think you know. You may do all this stuff. But he says, I never knew you. I never knew you. Do you want him to say that to you? Get into his mindset. And that you put on the renewed man which was created according to Elohim in righteousness and set-apartness of the truth. Therefore, having put off the false, speak truth, each one with his neighbour, for we are members of one another, which is the body again. Do you speak truth to your neighbour? Do you or not? You're going to have yourself on? Truth to your neighbour. Set the standard. The body has to have the standard. The body's not going to be seen in this world. There's going to be no battle unless we start this. We're just weak. We're just trodden down by Satan and his horde. You know, the vessels have to rise up and mature with the truth. Oh, it's so easy to speak out the truth. Learn it. It's wonderful. Be wroth, but do not sin. There it is. Do not let the sun go down in your rage. Yeah? This is the mindset of Yahushua. You're allowed to be angry. What a relief. If it's righteous anger, you're allowed to be angry. Oh, fantastic. Isn't that good? <laughs> be angry. Yeah. Don't sin. Yeah. And that's easy. Nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no more. Well, there's all forms of stealing, aren't there? There's all forms of stealing. Yeah? yeah. So don't do it anymore. But rather let him labour, working with his hands what is good, so that he has some what to share with those in need. So that's what we need to do, work so we've got stuff stashed aside so we can help others. What do you think? Oh, wonderful. I'm allowed to be angry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I mean, you're angry inside yourself. Yeah. I get 
Don't walk around and ah, being angry. <laughs> yeah. it's, a bit, it's all right at home with the kids. Yeah. You know, if you have to yell and be angry, they learn from that. Let no corrupt word come out of your mouth, brothers and sisters. What do you reckon? That's a tough one, isn't it? <laughs> no corrupt word come out of your mouth, brothers and sisters. You need to know the word so that you can let things come out of your mouth because you know that mouth of yours, it wants to go off. But if you know the scripture... You won't let anything corrupt come out of your mouth. But only such as is good for the use of building up, so as to impart what is pleasant to the hearers. And do not grieve the set-apart spirit of Elohim. Did you know you can do that? You can grieve him by your behaviour, by your thinking and conduct, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and displeasure and uproar and slander be put away from you along with all evil. So look what those people are doing to Lou what? They are disobedient to Torah because that is not how you behave, what they're doing. And if you're out there persecuting Lou what? You're going to be in for it, I tell you. You're not doing Torah. You're against Torah. And you need to come... If you've done anything to anybody that's wrong, you need to come and repent to them and apologise and put it right. Ease their heart. Make, make sure they know that you realise what you've done. And that's humble. And be kind towards one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as Elohim also forgave you in Messiah. So you've been forgiven. But do you forgive? Are you that sort of person? Have you worked through it that you're going to be like that? That's the requirement for the body. If you're not doing that, are you really part of the body? If you know it's wrong and you won't do it, are you really part of the body or are you a fake? Because the body needs to know this is the behaviour that the messianics should be having separating themselves from the rest of the world so the world can see the body of Yahusha works. It functions. And it can only work through this behaviour. And by crikey, you have to look at yourself. You have to be honest with this word coming at you. It's on the airwaves. It's being said. We're saying it. Wake up. Wake up. If you're part of the body and you don't do this, you're wrong. You've got to be wrong. You need, you need to be disciplined. You need to be told. You need to be helped. And there's lots of help coming out from um, Torah Institute. Lots of help, lots of videos, lots of teaching so that you can get into all this. You can understand, you know, forget about what other people tell you, what other messianics tell you. Get into this relationship yourself. You need the spirit of Yahusha, the Messiah, in you so that then the word is unlocked and it becomes alive to you so that you're walking in his guidance. If you don't know, I mean, I was speaking to a lady today and she said, I don't hear him. And she's... she's Spirit supposed to be spirit filled. She's supposed to be walking with him, and she says, "I don't hear his voice." I said to her husband, "Well, you need to get down and and give her the understanding. Work with her. You need to put everything off. You know, work with her so she's got the understanding. We need to hear his voice. If you can't hear his voice, where are you? What are you? What did you get immersed for?" What did you enter Israel for? We need, you can. Scripture tells you, you can hear, hear his voice. You can have a relationship. But the circus will say you've got to do it through us. Not true. It's all lies. Those men that have set themselves up in the circuses all around the world have no authority. They have 
usurp themselves over the, the scripture and usurp themselves above other men in, in Yahushua's eyes, in Yahuwah's eyes, they have no right to be living and performing the way that they are. It's being said, brothers and sisters, you need to know and you need to understand and come into this. It's being said on the airwaves, the body has to get in order. It's a slack old carcass now, I tell you. You know, I'd love to run into somebody that told me all this. I would love to sit down and hear all this. Oh, I'd just be in rapture. I'd applaud, I'd rejoice. Are you doing that now? Or are you judging me in your self-righteousness? <laughs> you stop smiling, Mark. I can't stop it. <laughs> Wonderful. Chapter 5. Chapter 5, Ephesians 5. Yeah. Become then imitators of Elohim as beloved children and walk in love as Messiah also has loved us and gave himself for us a gift and an offering to Elohim for a sweet-smelling fragrance. But whoring and all uncleanness or greed of gain, let it not even be named among you as is proper among set-apart ones. See? We're getting instruction here. The body, you know, we're given food, kosher. Certain dietary requirements we have to do because we're part of the body. We all have to do it. We all have to know about nutrition. We all have to, have to be healthy, you know. The food today is lousy. It's been hybridised. You know, so many bad things in the food that are going to kill us. We need to know all this. We need to get in there and figure it all out. Mm. Whoring and uncleanness of greed, of gain, let it not even be named among you as is proper among set-apart ones, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather thanksgiving. This is the body. These are the things that we're not to do in the body, in our body. We have to put these things off. You've given yourself the right to be able to do and say these things. You're not. You can't. It's wrong. It's pretty plain there. You know, if you're fussed up about this, you're pretty fussed up in the head. You need to know all these things. These are wonderful this is survival, you know. He doesn't want homosexuality in the body. Homosexuality, he tells us, is an abomination. It will destroy the body. The church, the circus, are accepting those type of ministers, men and women, and yet... Yet the Father says it's an abomination. Scripture has the last word. You either realise it or you don't. It's pathetic. There are lots of things. What can you think about the body that he doesn't want in the body, Mark? He doesn't want in his body, which is us. Hmm. What things can you think about that he doesn't want in the body? Oh, he doesn't want us all going off to a circus on the day of the sun. It's the wrong yeah. day. It's the wrong day. Yeah. He wants us, his body to be resting. Yeah. Not driving around everywhere. Resting. Yeah. Um, so that's that's a big one. That's our sign, Sabbath. Uh, that's a good one. What else? The, the whole Ten Commandments, all ten of them. What things are going on in the world? What things are going on? that he doesn't want in his body. Have you ever thought of it like this? No. He wants a certain mindset in the body, doesn't he? Yeah. He wants it his way, not our way. He doesn't want us to bring our rubbish into his body and decay it. Mm. He refuses it. We have to look at all this. Mm. What he's saying to us about what he wants in his body. Whoa. Amazing. 
For this you know, that no one who whores, nor unclean one, nor one greedy of gain, this is what he doesn't want in his body. If you're greedy of gain, you're an idolater there. See, who is an idolater? Has any inheritance in the reign of the Messiah Elohim, and Elohim. <clears throat> so it's a reign, it's not kingdom, all you people. It's the reign. Get the words right. He wants us to say reign because it's written here in his Torah. It was changed by the circus fathers, but we want reign, not kingdom. You know, it's a reign, a ruling, and he rules from the hearts of men and he brings them into his body. The body is the bride, isn't it, Mark? Yeah. Why is the body a bride? Why didn't he have the body a man? Why does he want the body to be recognised as a bride? That's a good What's question. What's your answer, mate? That's a good question. Well, you should have the answer. <laughs> You've got five of them. Because he, wa he wants to have children. Mm. He wants to, to reproduce. Yeah. That's right. He wants the body to reproduce. He created it that way. Mm. And it's got to be clean so that what comes from it is clean. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So we've been dirty and we've come in and he's cleaning up the spots and wrinkles in his bride. That's us. We have to put all this stuff off and come into the mindset that he wants and has prepared for us. It's all written here. It's very easy to see how to behave and what not to let in your body. <clears throat> we can all speak out. I'm speaking out about those people that are against Lou and Phyllis White. They're wrong. I'm speaking out against them. I love them and I pray for them but they're wrong. Their behaviour has to change. And all those other people that have turned against Lou and Phyllis, it's disgusting. It's against Torah. It's against the word. And you need to come out of it and make it right with Lou and Phyllis. Fix up this body. Get it in order. Let no one deceive you with their empty words. For because of these, the wrath of Elohim comes upon the sons of disobedience. So all those people are going to have his wrath. Lou and Phyllis needn't worry. They should be rejoicing. They shouldn't be hurt because his wrath is going to deal with the circumstance. Yeah, I'm saying it. I mean, I'm just saying what that says. I'm not saying anything of Chris Hilton, am I? I'm saying... I love the way you just flow with me and you're going along. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, do not become partakers with them. Don't do it. You were once darkness, right? But now you are light in the Master. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness. Not hard, is it? And truth proving what is well-pleasing to the master. It's not hard. He didn't make it hard. He made it easy because of love, because he loves us. But the wickedness that's in us and has been in us wants us to go the other way. But this isn't hard. It's beautifully prepared and have no fellowship with the, fruit, with the fruitless works of darkness, but rather reprove them. See the reprove, it's got a little V there. You go to the v, v down the bottom, it says, or confute or expose. That's what Lou is doing to these people. He's confuting them and he's exposing them, which has to be done. His behaviour is correct and he's being damned for it. But he is following this word. He is doing the right thing in the body. We all need to learn this, to behave this way. <clears throat> right. For it is a shame even to speak of what is done by them in secret. You don't talk about 
but all matters being reproved again, confuted or exposed down the bottom where the W is. But all matters being reproved are manifested by the light. For whatever is manifested is light. So whatever's going to come out, you can see it. Whether it's good or bad, it's going to be manifested, yeah? Mm. That is why he says, wake up, you who sleep, and arise from the dead, and Messiah shall shine upon you. All those messianics need to wake up and arise from the dead so he shines on you. See then that you walk exactly, not as unwise, but wise. Wise isn't very hard because he's explained it all to us. Redeeming the time because the days are wicked. The days we're living in are really wicked. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the desire of Yahuwah is. So look at that scripture. There it is. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the desire of Yahusha, Yahuwah is. Okay, so you're way out in the bush. You live by yourself. What, do you, what does that scripture tell you, Mark? You can do it. You can understand what the desire of Yahuwah is. If you're way out there by yourself, yeah. you can still hear him talking to you. What kind of loving is that? What kind of concern is that? How wonderful it is his heart. It should be flowing out of all of us like that, you know? He's so considerate and he loves us so much. That's why he's talking to us like this. This is just a foundation that we're putting out so we all know where we're, where, where we're coming from. It's all scripture. It's all Torah. We're coming from this. We're not coming, you know, having some silly little program by ourselves. We're coming from Torah. Off the cuff, honey, this is where we're going. And do not be drunk with wine. You can have a few wines, but don't get drunk. Yeah. In which is loose behaviour but be filled with the spirit. So, you know, the spirit's just as good as plonk, isn't it? Yep. You can get really high on, on the spirit. Speaking to each other in psalms and songs of praise and spiritual songs, singing and striking the strings in your heart to the master. Are you too angry to do that? Are you too <laughs> angry? <laughs> yeah. That's how you should be speaking to one another. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. And if you're too angry, you can't do it. So what are you going to do? Handle, deal with your anger. The word will give you peace. Mm. Angry, you need peace. The word. But if you haven't got the right immersion, you're going to have the horse inside your head kicking you around. <laughs> so you need to get the set-apart spirit in you. Yeah. Not the horse. Yeah. Yeah. Giving thanks always for all to Elohim the Father in the name of our Master, Yahushua Messiah. Mm. Hallelujah. Subjecting yourselves to each other in fear of Elohim. You've got to accept each other in respect of Elohim. Wives, subject yourselves to your own husbands as you would to the Master. Same way you revere and respect the master, you have to, as far as the mindset of Taurus is, you have to do it unto your husband. You have to. And that's where you have to get yourself. Ladies, because the husband is the head of the wife, as also the Messiah is head of the assembly, and he is the saviour of the body. So your husband is the saviour, literally, of your body. Now you want to think about it, girly girls. But as the assembly is subject to Messiah, so also let the wives be to their own husbands in every respect. So the assembly is subject to the Messiah. That's what we're talking about, the body, the assembly. We need to come into his mindset 
and listen and follow him. Wives have to be the same with their husbands. Okay, girls, you think, you think, you know, the guys don't get a go, the guys get a go too. Here it is. Husbands, love your wives as Messiah also did, love the assembly and gave himself for it. That's how far you have to go, guys. You have to be that willing to go that far for your darling. If you're not, you're wrong. You're not in the right mindset. You haven't got it together. You're a fake. Because we need to come into this body mindset. He's the head, we're the body, all the different parts. The body does what the head tells it. The head is ruled from the heart. Head and heart are the same. Yeah? Yeah. All right, so husbands, love your wives as Messiah also did love the assembly and gave himself for it in order to set it apart and cleanse it with the washing of the water of the word. We need the water there, the word to wash us. In order to present to himself a splendid assembly, not having spot or wrinkle or any of this sort, but that it might be set apart and... <clears throat> Lameless. And there's a little Z there. This is what the purpose of our calling is, why we have been chosen. Mm. How are we going, mate? Oh, beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, what do you think? Oh, need, the truth needs to come out. People are just stuffed in the head. Yeah. It's just, it's just become another Christianity. The Messianics have just become a, a Jewish version of Christianity. See it? Yeah. yeah. It's insane. <laughs> <laughs> 28. In this way, husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but feeds and cherishes it, as also the master does the assembly. So this is where the guys have to go with their wives. The guys have to give up their life for the wife, you know? Yeah. But not out, of, not out of order of Torah. Because we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Now, did you know you were a member of his body, his flesh, and his bones? Mm. No. This is how important this body is. Mm. Yeah? And he's living in the heart of it as he lives in the heart of our own body. For this cause a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. This secret is great. <clears throat> but I speak concerning Messiah and the assembly. Eh? However, you too, everyone, let each one of you love his wife as himself and let the wife see that she fears her husband. Okay, both guys and girls <coughs> have to go there, don't they? Both the guys and the girls have to get into this mindset to do it. The next scripture we're going to, Colossians, Chapter 1 and 2. It's not too exhausting, is it? No. Fantastic. How long has it been? Uh, we've probably been going about an hour after the getting set up. Colossians chapter 1 and 2 we're going to go through. Yep. So sure an emissary of Yahuwah Messiah by the desire of Elohim and Timothy our brother to the set-apart ones of Coloss and true brothers in Messiah, favour to you and peace from Elohim, our Father, and the Master, Yahuwah, Yahushua Messiah. We give thanks to the Elohim and Father of our Master, Yahushua Messiah, praying always for you. Having heard of your belief in Messiah, Yahushua, and for your love for all the set-apart ones, because of the expectation that is laid up for you in the heavens, of which you heard before the word of the truth of the good news, which has come to you as also in all the world it is bearing fruit and growing 
as also among you since the day you heard and knew the favour of Elohim in truth. As you also learn from um, Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant, who is a true servant of Messiah on your behalf, who also declared to us your love in the spirit. That is also why we, from the day we heard, have not ceased praying for you and asking that you be filled with the knowledge of his desire in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, to walk worthily of the Master, pleasing all, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of Elohim, being empowered with all power according to the might of his esteem, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has made us fit to share in the inheritance of the set-apart ones in the light, who has delivered us from the authority of darkness and transferred us into the reign of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sins, who is the likeness of the invisible Elohim, the firstborn of creation. Now, brothers and sisters, how beautiful is this man, Brother Shaw? How beautiful is his heart, the way he <clears throat> thinks of other people, how he speaks to them, how encouraging are his words, how lovely. Are you like this? Do you think of people to bless them with such wonderful words? Do you think of people in this light? They're all his creations and they're all going to death if they don't get the good news. They're all going to death. No, no existence after. We need to think of each other how he sees us. Yeah, you're receiving from him, but are you giving out what he wants you to give out to others so they know there's a definite difference in his body? Wow. Because of him, because in him were created all that are in the heavens and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or rulerships or principalities or authorities, all have been created through him and for him. for him. For him. Your existence is for him. You might think it's for you, but as I said before, the flesh is insatiable. If you don't cut that heart, circumcise that heart and get filled with the right spirit, your flesh will just take you to death and you'll be in misery, and you'll be unsatisfied. You'll never be have peace in your life. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Here it is again. And he is the head of the body, the assembly, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. See, he's the firstborn, that he might become the one who is first in all. So he's the one. We listen to him. We go his way. It's all written down here, but you can't comprehend it unless you've got his spirit, the set-apart spirit. Because in him all the completeness was well pleased to dwell. So the Father dwelt in Yahushua Messiah. That's pretty easy to understand there, isn't it? See? He tells you everything and through him to completely restore to favour all unto himself, whether on earth or in the heavens, having made peace through the blood of his stake. So he has the ability to give you peace, to cleanse you. It's all through him, Yahushua, the Messiah. He came to deliver us, deliver us from this insanity. And you who once were estranged and enemies in the mind by wicked works, but now he has completely restored to favour in the body of his flesh through death to present you set apart and blameless 
and unreprovable before him. If indeed you continue in the belief, founded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the expectation of the good news which you heard, which was proclaimed to every creature under the heaven, of which I, Shaul, became a servant, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you. That's what Lou and Phyllis are doing. And fill up in my flesh what is lacking in Messiah's afflictions for the sake of his body. That's what Lou and Phyllis are going through for the sake of his body. We need to come up to that standard, which is the assembly of which I became a servant according to the administration of Elohim, which was given to me for you to fill the word of Elohim, the secret which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed in his set-apart ones. See? been hidden. Now it's revealed in the set-apart ones. You have to become one of them to whom Elohim desired to make known what are the riches of the esteem, this secret among the Gentiles, which is Messiah in you. The expectancy of esteem, whom we announce warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom in order to present every man perfect in Messiah. Are you that concerned? You have to have this concern, for which I also labour, striving according to the working of him who works in me in power. So what a beautiful introduction. What a wonderful way to approach us. This is for us. These letters are for us. Look at that concern for us. We have to become that concerned for others. Mm. What do you think, Mark? Oh, amazing. It's much better when you just have the, the straight, pure word coming at you, isn't it? Yeah. It's just amazing. And you can understand it. Yeah. <clears throat> it's not hard. For I wish you to know what a great struggle I have for you and those in Laodicea. And for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. That's what Lou and Phyllis are doing. They're going through all this for us, you know. Yeah. In order that their hearts might be encouraged, being knit together in love and to all riches of the entire confirmation of understanding to, to a true knowledge of the secret of Elohim and of the Father and of the Messiah. They're all... One. It's all one. In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now, if you haven't been immersed in his name, had your heart circumcised, come into Israel, you're not going to get the hidden treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And he gives those according to his favour. Who he favours, he gives this to. So you're not going to know it unless you come into the experience and start responding to the living creator. If you're just playing religion, it's going to get you nowhere. You're just deluded. You have to actually come in to this relationship where you're hearing his voice, you're studying his word, and you're hearing, and you know what you're about to say is from him. It's not you because we're useless. This is what he wants to bring forth. Mm. <clears throat> and this I say so that no one deceives you with enticing words. They're always trying to get you out of it. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your belief in Messiah. The steadfastness of your belief. So it's working. Therefore, as you accepted Messiah Yahushua, the Master, walk in him, having been rooted and built up in him and established in the belief. That's what you have to go through. That's what you have to do. That's what you need. You need this word, this understanding, so that you are that. Mm -hmm. Overflowing in it, 
with thanksgiving, see? And once you see people overflowing with thanksgiving, you know these people are different. But you have to grow up and mature first. What are you laughing at, Mark? That's so true. Yeah. So true. It's very rare to find people like this. That's right. Yeah. See to it that no one makes a prey of you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the elementary matters of the world and not according to Messiah, because in him dwells all the completeness of the mightiness bodily. And you have made, have you have been made complete in him. See, you have been made complete. Who is the head, head of all principality and authority? He's the boss of everything. You don't accept that, you are deluded. You have lost the point. Yeah? Mm, yep. In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands. It's in the heart. And in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Messiah, the circumcision of your heart, having been buried with him in immersion in which you also were raised with him through the belief in the working of Elohim who raised him from the dead. So you're risen too. And you being dead in your trespasses, everyone's dead unless they do this. You're dead. You can walk around and declare what you think you are, but you're dead. The uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having blotted out the certificate of debt against us by the dogmas which stood against us. Isn't that wonderful? And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the stake. You get free. You get delivered from everything. You are forgiven for everything if you do this with all your heart. And to have that freedom and that peace is so wonderful. You haven't got this nagging at you continuously. Having stripped the principalities and the authorities, he made a public display of them, having prevailed over them in it. He showed them up for their religiosity. He showed, it, showed everyone what they are. Let no one therefore judge you in eating or in drinking or in respect of a festival or a new moon or a new moon or Sabbath, which are a shadow of what is to come, but the body of Messiah. Let, let no one deprive you of the prize. One who takes the light is <clears throat> in false humility and worship of messengers taking his stand on what he has not seen, puffed up by his fleshy mind and not holding fast to the head from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grows with the growth of Elohim. Who gives the growth? <clears throat> Elohim. If then you died with Messiah from the elementary matters of the world, why, as they are living in the world, do you subject yourselves to regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which are all to perish with use according to the commands and teachings of men. Those indeed have an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed worship, humiliation and harsh treatment of the body, of no value at all, only the satisfaction of the flesh. <clears throat> right. So I'm not going to, you can read Colossians 3 yourselves at home and see there's more instruction there of how he wants us to be. You know, it's up to us to look at what he's saying to us, how he wants the body. Yeah, so those commands and teachings of men, they're not. I can't even see. They're not 
you know, they're not what he wants, no. are they? No. False he wants, That's it. Mm. You don't get caught up in it, do you? No. You're set free from it all. What do you want to say to me, Marky, from what you've got? Oh, I just, um, I've just been so busy lately videoing and producing and who knows what else here, there and everywhere that you lose sight of the real scripture. And I mean, all the stuff I'm doing is about the Torah and working with the Torah, but to actually sit down and just have it going at you straight in the face of everything you're meant to be to come into maturity. Yeah. Oh, you just want to die. You're just like, oh my goodness, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that, I'm not doing this. You know, and you just you just want to die in the bum. <laughs> but it's but he doesn't feel like that. He's encouraging us to Yeah. To come come on guys, let's get get your act together. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's not negative. No. You know, it's full on positive. And it's just so wonderful to understand what he wants from the body. Mm. He wants his body to function on earth. Mm. And there's rules and laws, there's things that he doesn't want in the body. Mm. And it usually comes through our behavior. You know, the thing that we need to overcome is what? What are we told all through scripture? You have to overcome our flesh. No. Death. No. That's not no. Evil. evil. No. Sin. No. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, See? if the body, if if the flesh is insatiable, what's it want? The world. That's it. Yeah. See? Yeah. Hollywood. Everyone wants to be famous, yeah. wants to be accepted, you know. Yeah. Don't you mess with my toot toot. <laughs> Everyone wants to be famous in their own right and their own way. Yeah. Everyone wants all the beautiful, wonderful things, the holidays, the travel, everything. Mm. So that's what we have to actually overcome, be satisfied with what we've got, where we are, and start listening. Start listening to where he's directing us and which way he's directing us. That's the only way you're ever going to have satisfaction and the only way you're ever going to quench the desires, put out the fire of the insatiability of the flesh. Okay? There's so much the world has so much to offer us. We only need to take from it what we need. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You can have all the wealth in the world, but look at it, they just die. Look at Whitney Houston. Yeah. You know? Look at Elizabeth Taylor. Look at them all. Mm. They just died dead, never to be resurrected, only for judgment. Mm. You know? And leading others astray, Michael Jackson. Mm. Look at them all. They're all just getting wiped off the map. <clears throat> and yet, that scripture we were looked up before that the perverts and the harlots and the prostitutes and all those people will come in to the reign before the self righteous. Mm. So you can see who Yahushua's going for. You know, he wants the self-righteous as well, but they're not going to come in first. You know? Yeah. Amazing. So there are men there now trying to set themselves up as a messianic circus. You know, men and women trying to dominate and overcome. It's like which pastor can push the other pastor down is the greatest pastor. The pastor that's left standing in the presence of the spirit and the one that everyone else has fallen down to and he's left standing there, he's the dominant pastor. This is a sort of mindset stupidity that men are into. 
They want power and recognition. <clears throat> and they're bringing it into the Messianic movement. And it's Jesuit led, I believe, because that's what they've done with the circus out there. They're still trying to set people up to say, we are the chosen. Like they've sent all those people, all those Jews back to Israel. And it's before the time. This is what they're wanting, you know? Yeah. It's just all control. But we're not into that. We're into this behaviour. We're into how Yahushua wants his body. It's such a pity that there's no one, hardly anybody talks like this. No one's willing to come into unity. For goodness sake, yod hey, ooh hey, you know? Ooh, it's, it's a you. So his name's Yahuwah. Why put extra there? Why not come together in unity? Yahusha, you know, Yahudim, Yahudim. It's all the same name. What's, what's the problem? Let's get it together. Come to unity and understand the behaviour and don't put up with the wrong behaviour in the body. You can get angry. Don't sin. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Speechless. Are you? <laughs> All right, we're finished now, yeah? <laughs> we're finished. We're finished yeah. now. I just want to go into the word more and more. That's what I've got now, the desire for it, because I've just been, it, it just ends up being the last thing on your list of things to do in a day and it never gets, you never go to it and you feel like you're always working for Yahushua but you're not getting to know him and you're not hearing him like you could because you're not feeling yourself the way you should be. You still hear him and, you know, I get songs, I get this, that, this, that, but it's not like the word, you know, it's, it's different, you know. Well, when you're, when you're looking at the word tonight, mm. how different do you understand it now? Very. Mm. Isn't it wonderful? Mm. So different, isn't it? Yeah. No? Mm. Okay, brothers and sisters, now you've heard all this. If you want to write in and tell me off, please do. If you want to agree, we'd love to hear from you. Whatever you want to say, we'd love to hear from you. We're not going to be negative to you. It's just off the cuff how it really is. And we need this. Okay, we'll see you next time, brothers and sisters. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs>